So that is how you get from first impression where no one's ever heard of you and they've just seen you right the way through to super fan where they're breaking into your house and they're leaving you messy surprises on your pillow. What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Welcome back to the channel. So as we are aware, the music industry is a tough place. It is super competitive. When it comes to professional sport, you have to be the best, but you have to be the best at one thing. And when it comes to music, you have to be good enough to create something that triggers emotion that means people want to come with you on that journey and repeatedly listen to your music, to pay money to come and see you play live. And at the same time, you've got to be the one that's organized enough to put on these gigs, to make this content. And at the same point on that, you've still got to be one who's in the comments looking after your audience. But as musicians, we are used to a tough run. No money, no one turns up to our gigs. We pour our heart and soul into music and content only for three people to actually like and comment. And one of those is my mum. Thanks, mum. But we're used to a tough life. But we keep pushing on, we keep creating in the hope that one day we will be successful and make our living from our music and our creation. But we keep striving on, creating, putting out our music in the hopes that one day we will be successful and make our living from our music and from our art. But in doing so, there is one big myth. There is a tough lesson that we need to learn that we'll go through today and how you can get past that. The biggest myth when it comes to promoting your music on social media is that you need to get your music in front of more people. I know that sounds crazy, but let me explain. So when it comes to putting out your music, most musicians follow the same strategy, the warp strategy. The write music, the arrange music, the record music, and the promote music but it's the promotions aspect that usually gets frustrating. This is the bit where you've put all of your time, your energy, and a lot of the time your money into creating something. And so therefore, you want as many people to hear it as physically possible. So it becomes about reach. It becomes about getting your music in front of as many people as possible in the hope that you will build an audience. So you start bringing PR companies or Spotify playlist companies or pluggers or a bunch of other people that you think can start to push your music to the masses. The problem with this is, this is a part of the strategy. No doubt this is important and it's a part of the strategy, but it's not the strategy. It doesn't fit in to its own box. It is one part of a strategic strategy that starts and ends with a bit in the middle which is called reach and awareness. Don't get me wrong, every single business and brand and musician needs to get in front of people. It needs to get in front of eyeballs. But if that was the game, if that was the be all and end all, then every single one of us would be super successful right now. If you wanna get your music in front of people, then just hit that little blue promote button, that boost button, and from there, stick 10 or $20 in for thousands of people to hear or see you. For example, yesterday, I put 16 pounds, $20 into a campaign, and I got 21 and a half thousand views for $20. But if you realize that that isn't the answer, then what is it that you are trying to achieve by getting more people to hear your music? Is it social media numbers? Is it that kind of little bit of ego that comes along when you know that you're getting lots of likes or lots of comments? And if that's the case, then the biggest tip is go and put $5 and boost a picture to India because it's very, very cheap way of actually getting many, many people to like your picture and stick some comments in. But what's it actually gonna do other than make you feel very good about yourself? So where does reach fit into our journey of creating a fan? Well, let's look at our rule of seven and see how that fits into our music promotion strategy. Okay, so this is my rule of seven, but I've made it into the context of music, your music, music promotion, the music industry. 
So with that in mind, this is your first touch point, first impression. Before that, nobody knows who you are, they've never heard from you, and all of a sudden, your little advert or your song or something pops up. They could also be at a gig and someone's gone to see a band and you are supporting them or maybe you're on after them, but this is the first impression. This is the first time people know who you are, at which point the next touch point is awareness. So this might mean, with first impression, that they see you and they've forgotten about you. But awareness means they've taken to the next step. They've seen you and they remember you and they are now aware of who you are moving forward. After that, once people are aware of you, they might engage, might. So it means they might like some photos, they might put some comments, they may possibly even DM you, but effectively you've gone into the engagement part of the touch point. Then after that, subscribe. So for example, subscribing to YouTube, which you should be doing by the way, and I know as this is here with my unsmiley face, 65% of you guys don't subscribe to my YouTube channel. Amazing. So firstly, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the YouTube channel, but that just goes to show how hard it is to get people to subscribe. Whilst we're pushing people to actually hear our music, to actually get people to subscribe, even though it's halfway along and 65% of people who watch my videos still don't subscribe, shows it's pretty difficult. Then after that, you start to get to what I call consistent behavior. So at this point, people might have turned on the notification bell, you should turn on the notification bell, um, they might be seeking you out, they might be looking for your music, or they might have put your music into playlists so they can start to hear it more often. But this is starting to become a pattern, a behavior pattern. Then after that, you jump to the fan. At that point, you are building um, they, their social currency. And by that, what I mean is they are, they're in, they've bought in, they are part of this tribe. They want to potentially share, they want to potentially buy. So they might buy some merch, they might buy a live ticket, but they have effectively bought in to you. And then after that is the super fan, the crazy super fan. That's right, possibly a tiny bit creepy. You might need to take out some kind of court injunction and they may potentially send you some of their hair, possibly not from their head. And that is your seven stages. This is your seven rule, okay, of, of creating the super fan. But and a big, big but. What people are mostly caught up upon is this, the biggest myth of everything in the music industry, which is if you get in front of more eyeballs and more people see you, then you're gonna have this amazing successful career. No, 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 we've just found out. How hard is it to get people to subscribe? So when you're pushing this stuff, you're pushing your content, you might be pushing stuff with Facebook ads, you might be making more content, that is reach. You are trying to get a first impression so that people see you, but it still doesn't mean that they're gonna know who you are. They might see you, they might watch you, they might go, they might have forgotten about you literally five seconds later. The next thing is brand awareness. That's the second stage. So at this point, the difference between reach and brand awareness is now they are aware of you. They're going, yeah, yeah, no, no, I know, I know who you are. Yeah, I'm not saying I like you, but I do know who you are. So they've taken the next step. Now, after that, once they're aware of you, then they go into the funnel, as I call it. The pipeline is the way I, I, I like to think about it. When they're in the pipeline, effectively, what happens then is they start to, to, to like or engage or comment. So at this point, you're starting to build a bit of a relationship. Yes, they know who you are, and now they've watched enough stuff to go, mm, I might comment. And from there, after a while, and I mean a while, they might subscribe. Now, you might jump. Someone might literally see you and go, wow, this is, this is perfectly for me. It's exactly what I want. First impression, straight into awareness. I'm, I'm liking, I'm commenting. Do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna subscribe straight away. But that's a big gamble to think that you're gonna get that with this, because most of the time you don't. So after that then, they're jumping into con consistent behavior. So you can think, if 65% of people watch my channel doesn't subscribe, but a lot of people are still in this consistent behavior, watching lots of videos, they might uh, like, they might comp comment, they might go and seek out some videos, and then after that, 
becomes the super fan. And so as you can see going along there with reach awareness and into the pipeline, it's only these last three which I would class as purchase power. I don't think anyone is going to buy a hoodie or, or merch from you. I don't think anyone is going to come to a gig unless they are in the last three of these touch points. I think you might get a couple here, but this is where the purchase power really begins. So getting people into this seven touch points so we can get them into this pipeline and down into purchasing power, we need to think about where people are going to get this reach, where people are gonna get this first impressions. So let's write a couple of ideas down. For example, gigs. People might see you at a gig, uh, which I've done millions of times, and gone, well, this band's really, really good. And then from there, they may potentially start jumping across, um, and I've done that several times. I saw a band uh, in, in New York called Arkells. I am a big fan of them. I wouldn't go this far, but I'm definitely a fan of them, all because I saw them at a gig, never heard of them, now I'm a fan. Other than that, then you've got things like support tours, which might be another thing. Um, you might find it's uh, something like an ad, which was just literally an ad on Instagram. It might be um, a newspaper. It could also be, oops, radio play that someone hears you. So all of these things that people are now trying to push. We want more gigs. We want more supports. We're going to put more money into adverts. We want to get into a, a newspaper or a magazine. We want to get on radio. Brilliant. So each one of those, where is that going to take us? They are, that is going to take us, all of these are definitely going to take us to first impression. Yes, people are going to see it, but they might forget. But it might potentially get to awareness. It might get to engagement and it might get across to subscribe. There's a chance over time, over time, that it can take you down to fan. But you can't rely on that. You can't do one gig and expect people to jump to fan or super fan. You can't do one advert and expect people to get from first impression to fan without all of the stuff that goes in here. So the problem and the solution. The problem is people are trying to spend all of their money in order to get to first base, to get to reach. I'm going to go and pay someone to get us in front of as many people as possible to get here or possibly here. That's fantastic. But what are we going to do problem wise to actually get people down this pipeline as such? And if you're going to do that, the solution is we have to be making different styles of content in order to look after the people who are in different parts of the pipeline. That's why it's a pipeline. Because some people are here, some people are here, and some people are here. Now, you're making content, and that content needs to slightly differ depending where people are in the pipeline. These people need to know who you are more. They need, they need to learn more so they can jump into the pipeline. These people will do anything, so you just need to look after these people. But everyone's in a different part of the pipeline. So the solution is twofold. You know what I'm gonna say here, it's gonna be content, yes, because content is king, content is the whole point, but there is something more. Instead of spending all the money here, we're gonna spend part of the money here because we're looking after the whole pipeline, so we're gonna try and get people into here, but the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remember that the algorithm is not favoring you. You can have a 1,000 people who like your Facebook page. You can have 2,000 people who follow you on Instagram, and when you put something out, most of them don't see it. So we're gonna hold back small amounts of money ka -ching! for boosting certain types of content to different parts of the pipeline. So when you do a performance and you think, I'm really proud of that, well, some of the money is instead of trying to get into reach, is gonna go back into your fans because these are the people who want to see this. So when you do a, a, a live performance and you video it, instead of just putting it out there and saying, no one's in the room, but I'm gonna try and actually just put as much stuff out and hope for the best, you could say, no, 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 I want people to see that. That's really, really important. So I'm gonna put 20 or 30 or $40 into making sure that this is boosted 
to your audience, not this bit, which is what everybody wants to do. You're saying, no, no, I've got a thousand people who like me. I'm gonna make sure those thousand people see this because that way they get to see the thing that they came for. Because if they don't, if I don't boost it, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's not gonna show everybody. So when you're making the content, think about what the value is and which part of the pipeline the value is gonna go, and then make sure the part of the pipeline see it. This is first impressions. These people, they've gone way past. They're on season seven. These people are just about to watch the trailer. These people are on season seven. We don't need to treat them the same. What we can do is we can be telling people stories and we can be pushing different content to these people. Very, very simply done, you're making content which brings value and then you're spending small amounts of money to ensure that the people who are actually with you on your journey, the people who've already said, no, I'm with you, I'm here, they're actually getting what they came for. And if you can do this well enough and you're patient enough, then you can get people to start on this first impression and it won't be long before they're leaving you some surprises on your pillow after they broke into your house. And that's not a nice thought. So there it is in black and white and blue and green and red. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you can do me a favor, like, subscribe, 65%. Come on, guys. We're building this community. I'm so proud of it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.